Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're building a fully custom front suspension for this thing and we change up the look of the front a little bit and build a competition winch bar. So let's jump into it. Alrighty, then there were two. So they're all done there. Uh, it turned out pretty good. This one here was an absolute nightmare to get the pin in, but that happens. So anyway, there's the old bushes. As you can see, they're all bloody worn out. So it definitely needed to be done. So they're much tighter now. So now what we can do is actually hack off these and uh, make up some arms. So now I've got the wheel mocked up. We can cut off the spindle off the A-arm and bolt that to the wheel and then start to bend up some pipe.
tidy. So check that out. There's no wheel poke and that's our new front wheel poke. I reckon that looks really good there. Anyway, I've got this all tacked in. This bar I just left straight just to keep it nice and simple and it does actually give it a bit more ground clearance. So what we'll end up doing is putting a plate in here and then adding our shock. Uh, so as you can see, the gaps are pretty good there, but underneath here, they're not so great. So I'm just gonna have to try and fill those in. But I will be putting some triangles back to the hub just to strengthen all this up. But yeah, I think it's pretty good for a first time. So I reckon we'll start mounting up that shock. So I've just let the jack down there and it's just hanging. I'm super stoked with how this has turned out, guys. This is unbelievable. So I've got that top one tacked in, it's all in there. So we're gonna actually use the old um, shock mount hole and I'll plug weld that as well. Uh, we might even chuck something in the side there just to fill that gap because it was a lot bigger. I've got adjustment at the top and adjustment at the bottom so we can adjust our um, camber. But I think it should be pretty spot on. So now I'm just gonna chuck the wheel back on. We'll check our clearance. Um, my plan with these tie rods is to just cut them in the centre and add an extension all the way out to here. As you can see, it's probably about four inches too short now. So that should work for there. And then before I cut out this template, and we're just gonna weld that in there like so with a bit of three mil sheet. And then um, we'll jump on to the other side. Now some dimple dies on this piece would look really nice, but I don't have any, so I might have to get some.
right guys, check this out. Both sides are done now, pretty much spot on. Um, I do have a bit of a clearance issue on the shock there, so I'm gonna have to just sand down that mount that I made, just a little bit more, but that's fine. It's actually turned out really good. So now what we're gonna do is jump onto the steering side of things. So I'll have to connect up um, these tie rods to there. Now, these old brackets that we had here actually hit on the tire, so I think what we might have to do is slice them and bend them out a little bit. Um, and then we'll obviously have to put some type of spacer because we've lowered everything down. Alrighty guys, so I've got the steering arm all spaced up there, 45 mil in total. Now I have notched out a little section here so it doesn't hit the shock. I um, mean, as you can see, I've only got one spacer on the M10 bolt, so I will have to get another one and try and brace it back to it, just so that this whole thing doesn't actually move around. It is pretty solid at the moment, but um, some of the lift kits you do buy, they have like a billet piece that bolts in and it's all been sanded down, it looks really nice. So I've got the suspension completely lowered down onto the ground, as you can see, without a stand on this side. Now, I have got a bit of an issue here. I had to put a 5mm spacer added on top of the other spacer in there. Um, it's still it's a little bit better, but it's not very good. So we get full lock on left hand down, but right hand down, as you can probably see there, the steering arm just starts to bend. So the angles aren't that good there, so we, we could still turn a bit more. The wheel still has more to go. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna have to have a think about this one and sort of see what everyone else does and come back to it. steering works there. Um, got those two guns finished up. This side was actually bent by the previous owner, so I just did my best there. Um, so we've got a positive camber, so we've got more of the wheels sticking it, sticking outwards than the bottom. Um, so that's sort of what these golf carts come with factory. And I've set the tire, so we've got a meter from the center of the wheel to the center of the wheel at the back, and 998 mil um, to the front from center to center. So I think that should be tracking pretty good. Now what we can do is we can plate up some more of these, gusset it up, get it to a point where we can actually drive it, make sure this is all fine and then we can fully weld it all. All right, so because we ground this arm down and welded it up like that, it sort of put some heat into it. So what I want to do is strengthen it up by putting this little um, piece of rod in between and I'll do the same on the other side. Got this thing back together now. It's now running. I had to jump start it with the cruiser. 
Um, as you can see, all the suspensions are only tack welded together, so we're going to go for a drive, make sure this thing works, and then I'll be able to fully weld this whole thing. But yeah, this thing looks so bloody mean sitting there. It's got a nice stance to it now. So this is what happens when you send it just a little too hard back into the shed and things are only tack welded together. So I've got it jacked up the high lift jack. I broke off the front AR mount there, so I'll tack weld that back on. And the front quill um, actually mount come off on the top there. The exhaust fell off and it's stalled in gear, so I can't actually move it. Anyway, once I get it back in, I'll weld all those arms up completely because I'm happy with that. And then we'll jump onto a custom front bumper I want to build for this thing. Alrighty guys, check this out. With the magic of editing, it is all finished. Fully welded on, doesn't have to come off again until it's got to be painted. So now what we can do is we can jump in to this front bar. I picked up a little, uh, just a 12 volt ATV winch here. So we definitely need to upgrade the battery that's in this thing. I'm actually thinking about putting a battery box in the center of the tray on the back and um, just boosting it up. So having an isolator on there for when we need the winch. So what we're going to do is come off these factory mounts somehow. Um, I want to build just a standard, just a plate there, and maybe a skid plate underneath, and then just one single hoop around the front to poke out. So I think that'll look really tough. Alrighty guys, check out how good this thing's turned out. I'm super happy with how it looks. Not only have we gained a lot more ground clearance, we've gained this winch bar on the front. This buggy is now 110% complete, so we can pull this whole thing apart, finish welding it all, and then we can paint it. Now, what I wanna ask you guys is what color should we paint this thing? I was wanting to do a different color to the frame, to the body, but just let me know down below, guys. Drop your comments below. Now, this thing was a ton of work. I've never done anything this hard, and it actually turned out pretty good. So this took me actually a couple of days to do. So yeah, if you guys like this video, definitely give it a thumbs up. And I want to thank you guys too for helping me reach my goal of a thousand subscribers. I just could not do this without you guys and the love and support. But yeah, that's going to be all for today's video, guys. I have to wrap this one up here. This video is getting quite long. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure you guys smash that subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss out anything. I'll see you guys in the next one.